Are you a cryptocurrency investor transacting in DeFi? If so, one of the most important considerations that you may be overlooking are the tax implications. Decentralized finance is one of the most complicated areas when it comes to taxes and accounting because of the decentralized and peer to peer nature of it and the flow of funds of a lot of the on chain transactions. It can make the accounting difficult and sometimes it can make the tax treatment of certain transactions unclear. And that's what I want to go over today in this video. So, again, DeFi is a paradigm shift in the world of finance and you as a sophisticated investor are participating in this, but there's a lot of nuance to the transactions from a tax and accounting perspective. So let's get into it. Let's go over some of those intricacies. Now, if you have a specific tax question that I don't cover in this video, comment below and I'd be happy to go over it in a subsequent video or just by responding to your comment. So why is it important to understand the tax implications related to DeFi? There's a few different reasons. First is you need to be in compliance with the IRS. You don't want them knocking on your door, undergoing an audit, getting hit with unexpected taxes, interest and penalties because you took a wrong tax position or because you accounted for your DeFi activity incorrectly. Secondly, financial planning. <clears throat> By being able to understand your DeFi activity and keeping your accounting up to date, you'll be able to understand your financial decisions for planning purposes so you can make better decisions in the market. And lastly, risk management. By understanding your DeFi positions, you can see where you have risk concentrated within your portfolio. And again, you can start to make better decisions on how you should allocate your resources and manage your positions. Now, one overarching issue when it comes to these DeFi transactions is that for certain types of transactions, we don't have clear guidance yet from the IRS. We're working with existing, existing general guidance that they've given related to cryptocurrency. And then oftentimes we have to apply that to specific DeFi transactions. So keep this in mind when you're watching this video, but also keep this in mind if you're speaking to a CPA or to a friend that's telling you about a tax position. You want to make sure that you scrutinize that position and you understand the reasoning, reasoning and logic behind that. So let's get into some of the different types of DeFi transactions and some of the related tax implications. First, we have lending and borrowing. So this is when you go to a DeFi platform and it lets you as the user lend their crypto assets to earn interest or to borrow assets in order to take those assets and use them for another purpose. So when you're lending, any interest that you earn from lending is usually going to be treated as ordinary income, and that'll be taxed at your marginal rate. When you receive that income, it also sets your cost basis in that asset. So if you sell it at a later date, you can also have also have a capital gains exposure. So the, the income for lending is going to be taxable when you receive that income, when it's earned, not when it's withdrawn on the platform. So you can't just leave it there to, 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 to um, defer the income. Similarly, borrowing usually isn't going to be a taxable event with some exceptions. Using these borrowed funds to invest can create a taxable event. Similarly, if you put up one asset for collateral and then you borrow, and then when you return the principal that you borrowed, they give you another asset in return that can potentially be viewed as a swap because ultimately you've given one asset and you've received another, even if th there was a time period that has elapsed. So that is another thing. If you are borrowing from a platform, you want to be very careful in considering what asset are they going to use to return your collateral? Is it going to be the same asset? Is it going to be a different asset? Then another type of DeFi transaction that may be common for you is yield farming, which is just providing liquidity to a DeFi protocol in exchange for rewards. So these rewards for yield farming are going to be considered ordinary income. It's going to be taxed at your marginal rate. 
And that's also going to establish your cost basis in that in that asset that you receive. So if you sell it at a later date, you're not ta double taxed on the income. The cost basis will be reduced by the proceeds to calculate your overall capital gain or loss. So that's yield farming. Next, we would have liquidity mining. So similar to yield farming, liquidity mining involves providing liquidity to decentralized exchanges. As a result, um, the, the tax implications are somewhat similar. For rewards, they're going to be treated as ordinary income at your marginal rates, and that's going to also establish your cost basis in that asset if you do sell it at a later date. Now, when you are liquidity mining and you're locking assets up in a protocol, when you withdraw those assets from the protocol, depending on the specific protocol, there can be a capital gains event that takes place as well depending on, on, on the assets in the protocol. So when you're liquidity mining, you can have an income exposure, a taxable income exposure for the rewards that you receive. You could also have a capital gains exposure if the values of your shares have increased when you withdraw them. Next, we have staking. So staking involves locking up your crypto assets to support the blockchains, the blockchains operations and overall security. So for staking, you're going to receive rewards for doing that. Those rewards, again, are going to be taxed at your ordinary income, at your marginal rate. And then those, th those events are also going to establish your cost basis in that asset. So if you hold it after receiving the income and sell it, you're not double counted on the income. That will be considered in your cost basis. Now, a question I get a lot is our staking rewards really taxable when you receive them or only when you sell them this is a big point of contention in the crypto space there's been even some court cases on this as it stands right now with the current irs guidance staking rewards are taxable when receivable there are arguments to the contrary where they compare staking to creating a loaf of bread for instance where you're just creating a new asset and it shouldn't really be sold until it's and it shouldn't really be taxed until it's sold that is not an acceptable position right now with the irs so we need to take the other position and we'll watch and see if anything changes here with future court cases or future irs guidance Next, we have play to earn activities. So some DeFi protocols are incorporating gaming elements where users can earn rewards. Now, similarly to other rewards that you earn, these are going to be taxed at your ordinary income as ordinary income at your marginal rate. And then that'll establish your cost basis in that asset. Now, if you sell in game assets one for another, there can also be capital gains exposure when those those types of transactions are taking place. Another type of transaction we're going to see in, the, in this world of DeFi are simply token swaps, swapping one crypto for another. These are going to be taxable events because you're disposing of one crypto and you're acquiring another. So this will create capital gains exposure for you. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, if you're transacting across a lot of different assets during an appreciating bull market, and maybe you're going from Ethereum or Solana or another token, <clears throat> into all these DeFi protocols. That price of Ethereum or Solana or whatever you're using is gonna keep increasing when you're making these trades and it's gonna trigger capital gains events for you. So you wanna be aware of that and projecting those tax liabilities out and not have this come at a surprise months or a year from now when you sit down and do your accounting. So if you're participating in these types of activities, I recommend keeping your accounting up to date, doing tax projections, keeping a handle on your tax liabilities. <laughs> Lastly, we have airdrops and forks. So receiving tokens through an airdrop is very common in the DeFi space and crypto in general. This is going to be treated as ordinary income tax at your marginal rates. And again, this will also establish your cost basis in that asset when you receive it. When you go ahead and sell those tokens at a future date, those can trigger capital gains events. So you want to keep in mind these airdrops can be hitting your wallet and they're creating capital gains events for you. And um, it's going to be at the time that that token is received where the ordinary income is calculated. So if you receive an airdrop at 10K and you don't sell it till it's 2K, you're still going to be on the hook for the 10K income that you received at the time of receipt. 
So you want to manage these airdrops appropriately from a tax perspective and make sure that you are considering your tax liabilities and not exposing them to that validity risk. So obviously, you know, when you're transacting in DeFi, record keeping is of the highest importance. You need to keep this data to be able to build an audit trail for the IRS. You're going to need a lot of information regarding every transaction. And this includes the following. This isn't a comprehensive list, but the date of the transaction, the type of transaction, the amount of cryptocurrency that was involved in the transaction, the fair market value of the cryptocurrencies involved in the transaction, the transaction hashes so we can go and we can we can verify the transaction back to the blockchain. And there's several other, other pieces of information outside of this. So you want to make sure that you're compiling all this information in a systematic fashion. So there are some challenges that you're going to face when you're accounting for DeFi. And um, some of these are un unique to DeFi and um, cryptocurrency in general. One is going to be, you know, a lot of times you can be dealing with very heavy transaction volume, and this can make the accounting more difficult. And you want to make sure that when you're dealing with complicated accounting requirements like this, you're applying the proper due diligence protocols to your accounting system. Additionally, there may be also complex transaction patterns, and this can create issues because um, it can make the tax considerations more difficult and obviously the accounting more difficult as well. So with this, we want to make sure that we are documenting our tax positions and doing the proper due diligence on our accounting systems. Obviously, in addition to this, we're going to have lack of centralized reporting and evolving regulations, which creates a bigger burden on you as the taxpayer to make sure that we're documenting all the trades from an accounting perspective. And again, we're documenting our tax positions from a tax perspective because we don't have this clarity overall. And some other unique things you may be dealing with are cross chain activities and bridging, which are going to create more, more accounting complexity for you um, that, you, you know, you're, you're, you're going to want to make sure that you deal with those correctly. And you're also going to have to deal with impermanent loss, impairment loss, I'm sorry, when it relates to being in some DeFi protocols. And when you're dealing with impairment loss, sometimes these are hard to track from an accounting perspective because there may not be a function for calculating that just within whatever software that you're using. So, um, and another thing is when you're receiving these airdrops and forks, a lot of times it's not it's not that easy to find a fair market value for them and assign that to these airdrops. So that is another consideration and another challenge when you're when you're accounting and doing the tax considerations related to DeFi. So how can you mitigate some of these? Obviously, we need to keep detailed records. We need to have a strong due diligence process for our accounting process to ensure accuracy. What I recommend is before you engage with a DeFi protocol, reach out to a CPA like Camuso CPA and sit down with them and make sure that you understand the tax implications to transacting in these protocols before you transact. So there's no tax surprises. Additionally, keeping your accounting updated regularly can go a long way to the quality of your accounting. Waiting once a year or even longer to update your accounting can create a nightmare for you when you finally sit down to do your accounting, especially if we have to go and create the accounting for a lot of complex DeFi protocols. The more fresh in your mind that these transactions are, the better. When you're dealing with issues from a tax perspective where the tax situations aren't fully clear, you should be more conservative in the positions that you take and you should create contemporaneous documentation related to those tax positions that delineate your logic and reasoning, reasoning because this will help in the event of an audit. Another important thing is not exposing your tax payments to validity risk. What I mean by that is if you keep your accounting up to date and you do tax projections, you can know the taxable events that you've triggered year to date within your portfolio. 
And you don't want to keep those tax liabilities that you're going to pay within your portfolio because then they're exposed to validity risk. The price of your the value of your portfolio can drop when you have to pay your taxes. So you should at least be tracking your portfolio and placing aside your projected tax liabilities in USD, in USDC, in a stable coin, or even making estimated payments to the IRS. So, you know, those are some of the tips that I would give when you're designing an accounting and tax system for DeFi. And also, you know, some of the most common transactions that I see with my clients at Camuso CPA. So if you're transacting in DeFi and if you are trying to get a accurate and sophisticated accounting system set up that can track all of this activity while also making sure you're in compliance with the IRS, understanding the tax positions and filing this all appropriately so you can be in compliance, reach out to my team at Camuso CPA. We are one of the best and one of the first CPAs that are in this space. We've been serving cryptocurrency investors and Web3 businesses since 2016. Regardless of the complexity of your accounting or tax requirements related to cryptocurrency and DeFi, we will be able to assist you. So contact me and my team today at camusocpa.com and I'd be happy to speak with you. Until next time, I'm Patrick Camuso signing off.